Alrighty, this has been a highly requested video. We're going to have a look at how to dial in an 80s hair metal style tone. The thing to keep in mind with this is that like any subgenre of rock music or music in general, uh, 80s hair metal means different things to different people. I know when I was growing up and I got into it, hair metal to me meant uh, rat and Dokken and even bands like the Scorpions as opposed to, I don't know, Faster Pussycat and Britney Fox and that kind of thing. Uh, to some people, Bon Jovi is hair metal. Uh, to other people, you know, early Motley Crue is the definitive hair metal. So uh, when we're talking about these kind of things, it's really hard to come up with like a definitive kind of hair metal tone. But I think the best way to describe that is it's like really that sort of era of essentially hot rodded martial tones, guitars with Floyd Roses and humbuckers and super strats and, uh, you know, heaps and heaps of hairspray and spandex. So that's probably the most important part. I'm playing my uh, PV Wolfgang at the moment. It's got a uh, like a flush mount Floyd Rose, so you can't pull it up. And I never use a Floyd Rose anyway. But part of that sound, I think, is that bridge as well and uh, what it kind of takes away from the guitar you know it always um any any kind of implement that you have on the guitar kind of detracts from the natural tone of the instrument and essentially I, I think there's something in that the you know the material that floyd roses were made from the amount of wood you had to take out of the guitar uh, a lot of the time a basswood guitar which this one is with like a maple cap or something is a really good start so essentially it's a really bright sound um these have quite bright high output pickups as well so that's kind of what you want going in to the amp. So in the Axe FX3, uh, we can also play around with the input EQ and things like that. But essentially, if you want to play some hair metal, the first thing is to find the right amp. So my go-to, uh, there's a couple depending on what you want to do, but I always want that kind of like really pronounced mid-range, lots of saturation and, uh, you know, like high end that is uh, kind of like, it always had a little bit of fizz, kind of like the hair. So a good starting point is either a Plexi style amp uh, or something like the Friedman amps or the Atomica. So uh, kind of like, just basically pick whatever you want. I'm going to use a Friedman to start off with. I'm going to use the BEC45. That's one of my favorite models. And then for the cabinet choice, uh, there's a couple of different things. We can go for V30s, greenbacks. Uh, there's so many options there. I'm going to start with my go-to, which is the York Audio uh, Recto cabs that are stock in the Axe FX3. And this already sounds pretty darn good at the stock settings, which is why I really like it for one. So uh, yeah, this is what it sounds like at the stock settings and then we're gonna refine it. <laughs> So that's pretty cool. Uh, the thing about the Freedmans that I think uh, is the only detractor if you want like a really kind of authentic 80s metal kind of sound is that the low end is super pronounced in them. And if you go li and listen to a bunch of isolated tracks by, you know, Warren Dimitini, George Lynch, uh, all those kind of guys, you'll, you'll actually find that the guitar sound, because it's sitting in a mix, has a lot of the low end pulled out of it. So here's the trick I find with the Freedmans is basically pull the bass down, you know, to around two or three, and then just push the mids. Uh, and that kind of gets you into that sort of 80s metal territory immediately. <laughs> So that sounds pretty cool. And then as always, uh, it's kind of like the trick with this sort of stuff is like, if you just turn the gain up on the amp, it can get a little bit kind of blurry and mushy. In this case, if I turn the input drive up, you get this. But I think the trick here is gonna be to use some input EQ. A very popular trick back in the day was to use something like the Furman uh, Rack Parametric EQ and basically just boost around 800 to 1K. So I'm gonna turn the input drive down. We go to the input EQ section on the Axe FX. What I'm gonna do is turn the low cut up a little bit, uh, say to like 150, and then I'll center this frequency at about 800 Hertz. Close enough, Oop, bring it up a little bit. And I'll just basically add lots. And you can see here, we've got a visual indicator of what's happening. And I'll turn the Q down as well. So it's quite a wide mid-range boost. This is what it does uh, with those settings. <laughs> And 
And that's got the thing going on now in the low end where we've pulled a bit of low end out of it, but we've really pushed that 800 to 1K kind of range. So I really, really like that. That's um, that's pretty cool. Uh, you can add more saturation if you like just by using the, uh, the gain control or using the input boost. Uh, with this guitar, I think that sounds pretty good. Another important thing as well is the interaction between the master volume control. So if you turn the master volume down, generally it's going to make it a little bit fizzier and a little bit tighter and more modern sounding. But with this Friedman, I do like to turn the master volume up past five. I find it just gives it a bit of extra sort of power amp saturation and a little bit more of that sort of 80s metal glow. I'll think of a different uh, 80s metal riff to play as well. So this is with it turned up. I've normalized the volumes and posts as well. So hopefully it doesn't blare out of the speakers at you. <laughs> I love it. That's got the honk going on. Uh, as always, if you want to turn these up, if they're sounding too bright to you, uh, bring. I generally find like with the Freedmans, uh, you can bring the presence down and it doesn't affect the tone too much. Uh, and if, like I said, at low volumes, you're probably going to want to pull a bit of bass and a bit of treble out as well. <laughs> All right, so let's save that. If we wanted a solo tone, we basically just want slightly smoother, a little bit more saturation. So I'm going to copy this channel to channel B because I really like the way it sounds. And on channel B, I'll leave everything the same, but I'm going to go into the preamp section and I'm going to turn a, uh, I'm going to use a super overdrive boost and I'll turn the level right up and this should give me heaps of extra gain. It does this. <laughs> sloppy there but that's the idea so that's pretty cool for a solo tone uh the other big factor in this is the effects that we're using so a lot of those 80s recordings had a lot of reverb on the guitars and that's kind of part of the sound and um a lot of the, you know, a lot of the Michael Wagner stuff, you know, he did Dokken and White Lion and just about everybody. Uh, there's a lot of like plate reverb going on on there. So right at the end of the chain, I'm going to add a plate verb. One of my favorite sounding ones is this London plate. So I'll just do that at the stock settings and it will sound a little bit like uh, kind of washy out of the mix. But when you chuck it in a mix, it really helps those guitars sit in that kind of a... Uh, 80s metal kind of style. So this is with the plate reverb. <laughs> do there is maybe turn the time down a little bit sort of around the one and a half second mark and uh, yeah it just kind of cleans it up a little bit and also you can go into the EQ and I turn the low cut frequency up a little bit just to keep the low end a little bit clearer so sounds like this <laughs> That's actually, I'm really digging that with the Super Overdrive on. Uh, this is, so that's technically my solo tone, like I said, with more saturation. If you want less saturation, you get this. Ooh. 
Wonderful stuff. Again, the plate reverb is totally to taste. I pretty much like it at those stock settings, but you might want to turn the level down a little bit or up a little bit, depending on what you like. Right. Another big factor in these kind of tones is obviously chorus and delay, time-based effects. So for solo stuff, I normally like chucking in a delay. Let's go to the delay block and bring something up. And essentially, like pretty, I'd normally go for about 600 milliseconds with a delay for something like this, the mix around 30%. And uh, choose your delay mode wisely. One of my favorite sounding ones is a stereo tape, which I think sounds pretty good for the 80s kind of thing uh, with the BE, uh, with the boost. So channel B, it sounds like this. <laughs> And that to me, like my favorite 80s lead sound is George Lynch and that kind of cops a bit of a Lynch vibe. All I would do is turn this left-right time ratio down a little bit more just to sort of offset the stereo spread. <laughs> Uh, maybe a little less feedback and a little less mix, and we get this. Yeah, that is doing it for me. The last thing that we will add. So I'm actually going to save this as, let's do this. I will just hit save. I'll call this LT 80s hair because it's pretty happening and because I have the 80s hair going on my head as well, as many of you always note. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go scenes and copy this scene to scene two. So this is going to be my lead scene. And then on scene one, I'll turn the delay off and I'll set the amp channel to channel A and I will save this as my crunch or just rhythm kind of scene. So uh, we'll do a clean part as well just after this. But so this is the rhythm tone. <laughs> Marvelous. Let's do a clean sound for this kind of thing. So uh, the popular amp at the time was the Roland Jazz Chorus. Uh, let's bring up the Jazz 120 model and have a listen to how that sounds. Um, we're also going to add a chorus block. So I'll go straight ahead and add a chorus. Um, some of my favorite choruses for 80s stuff are obviously the 80s style chorus in there, but the stereo tri chorus is really cool. Uh, this was more a sort of like, uh, you know, this was less on the 80s hair metal records than it was on a lot of pop stuff and a lot of kind of like fusion stuff, but I'll use it anyway. And we're still using the same cab. We'll have a listen to some different cab choices in a second as well. So yeah, I'll turn the delay off. I'll leave the reverb on and we have stereo tri chorus. This is what it sounds like at stock settings. <laughs> Which is not too bad. It's very, very bassy. So I'll go back to that input EQ again and turn the low cut up quite a bit just to sort of clear that up. And we get this.
So just toying around with it a little bit there, you can hear that as you turn the rate up and down, it kind of uh, not only changes the stereo spread, I do like the center depth low and the outer depths a bit higher. Uh, but yeah, kind of somewhere around in that like, you know, 0 0.5 hertz kind of rate is pretty good for the essentially cop and the jazz chorus thing or the ADA MP1 clean, which is pretty cool. So yeah, I, I would say that's a pretty cool set of 80s hair metal-ish tones. Uh, you can hear there that turning the bright switch on the jazz chorus really helped it get that kind of sparkle. It's still not quite there though. Uh, so let's try a different cab. I'll try like a greenback cab maybe. Oh, this lynchback cab. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Let's have a listen to the distorted rhythm sound with a couple of different cabs as well. This is with the lynchbacks. <laughs> And I like that Brit TV ML as well. That's pretty cool. The greenbacks kind of give you this cool, chewy mid range thing with some extra hair up the top as well. One last thing before we do all of this is the power of pitch detuned. So uh, this is kind of going to give you that like later 80s Van Halen kind of thing, uh, but pitch detune was on absolutely everything. I'm just gonna remember where it is. And essentially we'll just go with the classic dual G tune. I'll go like minus 11 either side. That's where I like it. Like I said, experiment with uh, these settings here. And uh, yeah, basically this is what this does. It's gonna make everything sound nice and wide if I pan it accordingly. There we go. And let's go stereo input mode for all of this because I want to keep it stereo. <laughs> I much prefer that actually with the drive down a bit and the level board up with the JC120. You can hear there that stereo chorus and the pitch detune just makes it sound extra wide and extra lush. Uh, for the clean sound, you might even want to go for like a big hall reverb as well, uh, or one of the new ambient reverbs in there, like these, uh, you know, the Cumulo Nimbus or something, which does this. <laughs> But I think I like the music hall reverb out of all the halls for 80s stuff. <laughs> I really like the decay on that one as well. And you can also uh, play around with some 
dotted rhythmic delay as well. But I will chuck this preset up on the axe change if you guys want to play around with it. Like I said, uh, the Freedmans are great for this kind of thing. You just have to pull some low end out. Uh, you can watch my tutorial on the Marshall series talking about the Plexis and the JCM 800s and that kind of thing. I've got a John Sykes preset. I've got a Georgia Lynch preset up there. And hopefully between all of those, you can kind of uh, distill the approach. And really, a lot of this stuff is about the way you play. Uh, you know, obviously the 80s was kind of like a high watermark for insane, cool, shreddy guitar playing. So, uh, and you know, other amps like the Mesa Boogie Mark series and stuff like that. Or if you're a like Metallica, Megadeth, Slayer kind of guy, totally different approach. But uh, for hair metal, uh, this is this this is the way I would approach it. And it's just basically like when you're playing lead guitar, this is the thing about hair metal. You want to make all those faces and you want to make it feel like, you know, you're in a stadium with 80,000 people just, you know, wearing tight pants and huge hair and, you know, all those cliches. And you want to just pull harmonics out of the guitar and play fast runs and make it sound like this. <laughs> And pull all those dumb faces that I pull all the time. So yeah, there's a, a little uh, insight into how to craft an 80s hair metal tone. There are no rules with any of this stuff. Uh, go and play, I, I guess, use this approach to kind of dial it in the way you like it. Play around with some high gain amp models. The Atomic is another really good one, like I said. Or the Plexis and the 800s. Anything with gain, basically. Uh, the Soldano SLO or the X88 too. And uh, yeah, go and have some fun. Play some 80s hair metal and um, get, the, uh, get the Aquanet and the Spandex out.